Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another unpopular opinions video. Now I see how much you guys loved the previous installment of this video. And I've decided on my channel, I'm literally going to keep it at Advice with Cat, Candid with Cat, Unpopular Opinions, Vlogs, and Mental Health, and you know, growth stuff. That is what this channel is about. That is what you are to expect when you go into this channel. Thank you so much for your constant support of the channel. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do now before we get into these unpopular opinions. This is the last video that I'm filming for the day and I am so excited. Every single time that I'm about to film the last video of the day, I'm just like, yes, thank you, God, thank you. I made it through the day. Um, so please do subscribe to the channel. Also click the like button so that I know that you have liked the video or that you like my content. I really would appreciate that. It goes a long way. So without dilly-dallying, let's get into these popular opinions, unpopular opinions, share. Mmm. Mm. Let's get into these unpopular. Oh, that's nice. Mm. First and foremost, South African radio stations are not what they used to be. Okay? I don't care who says what. Take a minute, think about it. South African radio stations are not what they used to be. Frankly, they are boring. How many times in the week do you actually listen to the radio? What could you actually say is your favorite radio station? For me, the only radio station I listen to is 702. If I'm not listening to 702 for the news and the political talk and all of that, because I study politics, okay, at school, I did that. So I find it very interesting and hope and pray. One of my biggest hopes and prayers and dreams one day is to be a Bongani Bingwa or a DJ on 702. I, I, I really want that for myself one day, one day, one day. Um, and that's a big dream of mine, but I listen to only 702. YFM? YFM is not what YFM used to be. Metro FM is not what. Do you remember YFM Kadina Kotabo Fresh and Bad Boy T and Root Boy Paul? Do you remember YFM in those times? YFM was lit. Do you remember 5FM at the times of Gareth Cliff? When Gareth Cliff was still in 5FM at that time. When it started out at the time. Come on, guys. Let's not even lie. Do you remember Metro FM? Because it's Eddie Zondi. And Wilson B. Right? Like, they are just radio just for me. I don't care who says what. Like, radio for me is just not what it used to be. What's going on? What's cooking oil? And that's that on that on sparkling on period. On sparkling water, fresh water, period. That's it. If you want to come for me, catch me outside. I'm, There's I'm... this trend on TikTok that I have no friends trend. I think it's become sensationalized. I think people who have friends act like they don't have friends. It's like this trend out you want to seem like you're this, you know, I don't have friends, you know, people don't get me. Like, well, ah! Right. Really? 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 Like, there's, there's, let's be honest, there's either one person or two people, two people, that you could go to if you needed to go to those people and speak to them. This business of people saying I have no friends and actually trying to sensationalize that and actually make it into a trend is kind of yuck. It really is kind of yuck. I know that some people don't take to having friends easily. They struggle to make friendships and whatever. But I don't think they'd go out of their way to make a trend and to make a video of it on TikTok and talk about how they... It's just cringeworthy. I don't know, like, am I the only one who finds it really cringeworthy to see something like that? I <clears throat> okay. Um, this one is going to uh, hurt the people who are for the world and for anti-pollution and for we are the world. It's going to hurt you guys, and but it's real and it's true. Uh, paper straws suck. 
Okay? Paper straws suck. Bring back plastic straws. <laughs> Bring back plastic straws. Paper straws suck and they also contribute to pollution. Like to believe it or not, they also contribute to pollution. If you want to fight me, let's go. Let's Let's go! Why? Let's go. You want to fight me on it? Shut. You want to prove me wrong? Shut. But paper straws suck. Have you ever tried to put a paper straw in a Coca-Cola? Tell me what happens. When you take a Coca-Cola, a nice cold Coca-Cola with ice in it, and you put the paper straw in, tell me what happens. Ah, I'm just tired. Does the coconut spew out of the paper straw? Does it not? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I rest my case. Paper straws suck, bring back plastic straws. And I know that there are places who have just completely outruled plastic straws and all of that. That is fine. If that's the case, bring in stainless steel straws, bring in glass straws, bring in something else. But paper straws suck. I say what I say. You know, the weather today, it's very hot. It's very hot. And uh, one unpopular opinion I'm going to share with you is that being cold is better than being hot. There is something I loathe about being hot. That's why I do not like summer months, spring months. I can't stand it. I can't stand the feel of sweating. I can't stand the feel like my body is burning up and I don't know what I can do to cool it down because I'm gonna have a drink Okay, I'm gonna have a Coke, I'm gonna have a, a, a chimichanga, Savannah, okay? I'm gonna have this, I'm gonna have ice water with lemon. And in the time, while I'm doing that, mad refreshing. So good, so delicious, amazing, wonderful. And then, five seconds after that, back to square one. Mm, guys, I think I think it's so mm. So for me, I prefer being cold. I prefer to be cold rather than to be hot because when I'm cold, I can layer up. I don't have to worry about the fact that oh, I'm cold, I'm cold. You just get, you put in more gloves, you put in more jackets, you put in more pants, you wear Vasco Takamas, Long Johns, you do whatever so that you can warm up. I would rather be cold than be hot. Personally, this time of the year for me in the Southern Hemisphere, summer and spring, I hate it. I hate it. I, yo. Oh, no, 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 no. I cannot tell you. I hate it. I, I just, I love winter because it's cold, it's cooler, the air is brisk, it's fresh. It's just, you know, the, the feel of the cold on your cheekbones and it's like really cold. And the winter fashion is bomb. Winter fashion is bomb. Some of, summer fashion, ripped jeans and all of this and ah, they can catch me outside. They can catch me several seats outside. Nothing, sweetie, is like a coat and heeled boots. Nothing, nothing. Nothing does it. Okay. Let's make the boys and the girlies mad. I personally don't believe in the concept of body count. This business, Yaore, oh, how many people have you slept with? Nah. What I must do? Why? I feel like that concept is a concept that was coined by men. It was coined by men to make women feel like they were being inappropriate for the amount of people that they have slept with. It's a concept coined by men to make men feel like, hey, you know, yo, you the man, you the man. Oh my gosh, you slept with how many women? Oh. oh my God, you did that, you're the man, you're the man. Congratulations! Oh, oh my God. And actually make women feel like crap because they slept with 50 guys, whatever. I don't believe in the concept of body count. It's a social thing that has been coined by men to make women feel undervalued, unappreciated, not good enough, uh, make you feel guilty for having some sort of sexual liberation. I don't believe it. I think the concept of body count, anchor them. Anchor them how many people you choose to play acrobatics with in the bedroom or whatever. The only thing I care them about. Ah. 
is we're going to go to the doctor, we're going to check our bloods, we're going to check for the STDs and the STIs, and that's it. I really don't care. I really don't care. And I don't expect you to care. If you do, we're going to have a problem. Because now, what if I come out and I tell you 150 people? Yeah? Done? How are you going to make me feel? It's a concept that is coined by men to perpetuate men, chauvinism, misogyny, patriarchy, so many things. I don't have time for it. Sorry. Not sorry. This one is going to be hard for men to swallow. But women, let's go for the men. Believe it or not, most of the time, women do not go out of their way to want or ask for or require compliments from men. Why? We don't. We don't. Men seem to think that they've done a wonderful justice just by saying that, oh, you look good today. Oh, your makeup. Oh, you look great in that dress. Oh, your ass looks great. Oh, this, this, this. Men seem to think that we women go out of our way to look good, dress good, smell good, all because we are vying for the compliments of men because we want to feel validated by them. Hog wash. <laughs> More than anything, a compliment that comes from a woman to me, my goodness, that holds a lot more weight in my life, in my mind. That changes up my day than a man who's going to be like, hey, babe, nice ass. Then a man who's going to be like, oh, you look good. Or then a man who's going to be like, I, I know I look good. And then add lame to the list. Add whack to the list. What? What? Even the pants. Even the pants. And then what? So you said, I know, I know I look good. When I walked out of the house, I looked at myself in the mirror. I'm like, damn. So you telling me that I look good. But if a girl, a woman says to me, oh, damn, that's a nice dress. You look really good in that dress. I'm like, girl, stop. <laughs> So no, we're not vying for the affections or the validation of men or because they choose to compliment us. We don't go out of our way to do that. Thanks, bye. Ooh, this is gonna make married people mad, but I think, and I'm gonna say it, and I'm not married, but I'm gonna say it, and I said what I said. And if you're going to disagree with me, disagree with me. Come for me, catch me two streets away outside waiting for you, okay? Shop. Women, a lot of the time, get married for the splendor and the glamour of the wedding and not necessarily the marriage. Hi, Tomasana. Hi, Tomasana. Hi, Tomasana. <laughs> Do you want to take a minute? Do you want to take a minute? Okay. Take a minute. Take a minute. Women go out of their way to make sure that they put up money for their weddings, to make sure that they got the best dress, to make sure that they got the this. They prioritize the glamour and the splendor and the extravagance of the wedding more than they can actually say that they are ready for the marriage that comes from it. Catch me outside. You got a problem? Let's go. <laughs> ah. Did I piss you off? Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I have seen it watching marriages disintegrate after six months, eight months. Do you know how many people got married before COVID, right? They got married before COVID and then COVID hit and they were stuck in the house with each other. Two years later, they divorced. But they can sit back and tell you how their wedding was at Cape Point where the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean met and the cold and the warm that, 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 that just brought together the cold and the warmth and, and how my heart was so cold before I met you and then this and I'm wearing a uh, Hurt Johan Kutsir dress and I'm wearing David Dalit dos and I'm wearing that, that, that uh. <laughs> Are you ready for your marriage? After that one day where you went nuts 
and you spend 200, 500K, are you ready for your marriage? Oh, this one is mean. Okay. Unpopular opinion. Personally, I feel like newborn babies are ugly. Black, white, colored, Indian, purple, yellow, green, orange, red. Newborn babies are ugly. They look like little rats. <laughs> they just look like a shriveled up potato. <laughs> potato okay and then when they've got hair they look like mr potato head Woo. that was funny Woo. <laughs> come on let's tell the truth newborn babies are ugly af okay the truth of the matter is they are ugly and i'm not even gonna lie it is what it is i feel like newborn babies are ugly and they're like oh what do you think that's my baby girl and then you're forced to like say she's she's so cute mm. <laughs> all right this is for the people who drive small cars people who drive small cars are the rudest drivers on the road and they're the fastest drivers on the road i cannot tell you how many times i have had to come over to the left hand lane from the fast lane on the freeway because there was a a picanto behind me or a this they drive like they are not driving 14 inch driving a car that's sitting on 14 inch wheels it's wild to me because i'm thinking like at that speed one wrong move they drive like every time a drive a truck drives past them their cars don't shudder like this they drive like they are freaking superman like they could die today and they don't care damn <laughs> Then they'll go into parking spaces, right? And then park their car right at the front. So when I'm approaching, looking for a free parking space, I think it's open and then boom, there goes little Agia parked right there. And I'm just like, bruh, could you just maybe stick it out a little bit so I could see it? And they're so, they drive so fast on the road. Like they're literally pushing 160 on the road with 14 inch tires. And I'm sitting there thinking, when I went wrong move, I just said what I said. They drive like they have nothing left to live for. Honestly, they have nothing left to live for. It is what it is. Speed is my name. Speed is the name of the game. The need for speed, baby. And I'm gonna say something else. BMW drivers, of course, sense. No sense within BMW drivers' heads. Nothing. And nothing. Eh, nothing. No sense, la. BMW, BMW, no sense, Shem. You can catch me outside, I still would have stayed. No sense with BMW drivers. Those guys are rude, they run you off of the road, they drive like their car costs five million rands and that they're sitting on gold-plated seats or something. I don't know what the hell is wrong with BMW drivers. They drive like they're crazy. Basically, they drive like they're crazy. I said what I said. I told you, you can catch me two streets away from here, outside, waiting on you, sipping on my whiskey. <sighs> all right, all right, let's finish this off. Let's see. Um... Add lame to the list. Add whack to the list. 